We're going to talk about money, 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 and budgeting, taking control of your finances. So I asked last class, how many of you have a budget? And Michelle's the only one that raised her hand. And so me and Michelle have budgets. Nobody else in here has a budget? Okay. All right, well, we're going to learn how to do a budget. And uh, the week of the 14th, remember the week that we're having online, um, we're actually going to do a budget project where you'll um, come up with the budget template. I may provide one for you, but you'll have a budget template that you can provide and do a complete budget. So whether you live or not with your parents or you're on your own, it's so important to keep track of your finances, manage your money. Um, uh, control your finances if you have any. If you don't, it's always good to know anyway how to do this. So know your bank balance. This day and age, it's so easy to know your bank balance. There's so, there's so many apps. Even my the uh, myriad of banks that I have, I just open the app and right on the front page it shows my current balance. So you can always know your bank balance and avoid bouncing checks or having a debit card rejected. So the bouncing check things, that's probably like for boomers like me, um, because hardly anybody writes checks anymore. Um, and so we mostly use debit cards or cash, or mostly debit cards. But how many of you have actually gone in or been in a situation where you went to the store or what have you and you ended up having your debit card rejected because your bank balance was low? I've had that happen to me um, where I wasn't familiar with my balance and maybe I used it at the, the store and there was, not, there was uh, not enough money on it or I used the wrong account. So I wasn't familiar with the bank balance on a different account. Um, so that's always an embarrassing situation. Um, so if you know your bank balance, know what you're spending. Uh, keeping track of your debit and credit card spending because it can be very tempting to just spend and spend and spend on credit cards without really paying attention to what that balance is. You know, because the monthly payment, you know, you spend $2,000 on a credit card, but that monthly payment is, you know, $33 or something, right? So it's very impulsive, or it's not impulsive, it's very tempting to actually buy uh, on credit cards and not keep track of it. Uh, does, are folks in here, do you have credit cards? Anybody have a credit card that you're like wanting to pay off soon so that you can, okay, so we're gonna learn a little bit about that and how you can have a goal to pay off those credit cards and how you can actually calculate the amount of money that you would have to pay to have a zero balance by a certain time. So let's say you have a thousand dollar balance on a credit card and it's 21% interest and you're like, okay, how much do I need to pay on this every month to pay it off in, th in four months? as opposed to making this you know, $25 payment. We're gonna learn about that, uh, and, and uh, we'll learn a little bit more about that in chapters 4B, 4C, and 4D, um, how to do that. Um, don't buy on impulse. Um, anybody in here, raise your hand <laughs> and say you're an impulse buyer. I impulse buyer. Impulse you have purchased on impulse. impulse buyer. Yes. I have done that too. So I have purchased things on impulse, um, but I am not necessarily an impulsive, impulsive person to, to think about it um, when I think about it. Buy it only if the purchase makes sense. So I guess we're all allowed, you know, three strikes in our life, you know, to buy things that don't necessarily make sense. But hopefully you don't have any regrets uh, when you buy something on impulse because that seems to always be the case. Okay, make a budget and don't overspend it. I think this is probably the hardest part, right? Make a budget and don't overspend it. First of all, creating a budget, but then how do you keep control and not overspend on that budget? I myself, had a, I've had a budget, and I'm not, I'm not kidding about this. I've had a budget since I was like 16 years old. And the reason why is because um, I started working at a very young age through a, a summer program that allowed me to work when I was in eighth grade through the summers. And so I was, I had money. So, you know, being a, you know, a 12, 13 year old person with, with having money when we never really had any to, to, to begin with, you know, I wanted to make sure that I let it last all year round. 
So I started having a budget when I was very, very young, and um, I've kept to it, you know, all these years. And it's simple. It doesn't have to be anything um, uh, extensive. It's just really what's, what am I making and what am I spending and what do I have left? So um, try not to overspend on that budget. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Uh, Cassidy, she recently uh, began keeping her spending under better control, but she still can't fully pay off her credit card. She maintains an average monthly balance of about $1,100. So that's just her average balance floating every month. And her car charges a 24% annual interest rate. So which it bills at a rate of 2% per month. So first of all, how do you think they got the 2% per month? If it's 24% APR, where does that 2% come from? Each month. Yeah, so you divide by 12, right? Mm -hmm. So if they give you, uh, one thing to note is when the book gives you, or the homework problems, or anything, a contract that you receive gives you an APR, that stands for annual percentage rate. So if it's 7% or if it's 8%, you still have to divide that by 12 to get the monthly amount. So in this case, if it's 24% annually, it's going to be 2% uh, per month. So they want to know how much is she spending on credit card interest. Later, we'll figure out how she can possibly pay off that $1,100 in four or five months or whatever at 24% interest. So how much is she spending on credit card interest? So on a monthly basis, what we can simply do is multiply her regular balance, which is 2% of her regular ongoing balance of $1,100. So if I take 1100 and I multiply it by 2% or 0.02, that gives me $22. So you probably know as well as I do that a lot of these credit cards $22, your minimum payment is usually going to be like 35, 40 bucks. They have this, these new laws in place ever since the financial crisis where it has to be like a certain percentage of the, of the minimum or something. So the minimum balance has to be like greater than the actual interest. So you are paying something off, but let's say the minimum balance on this was 25, right? You're paying $22 in interest, but the minimum payment that you have to pay every month is $25. How much are you really paying off on that credit card on every month? Really just $3, right? Because if, if it's $22 in interest on average that you're paying, that's the interest component. So that's what you're paying the credit card to have the privilege, I guess, if you want to call it a privilege, of using it. So you're paying $22 in interest, your minimum payment is 25 and you're like, yeah, I can afford it. I have a job at Starbucks and I'm making plenty of money. So you make the $25 payment but really $3 is only going to the $1,100 balance. So in essence, you can't just take the $1,100 and divide by $25 to figure out what you're paying because you have to figure out what the interest is as well. So that's the trick of these uh, credit cards. Annually, if you multiply that $22 times 12, you can see that she's paying $264 in interest. So if you're living on a tight budget, which many students can be, um, $260 can be a lot, you know, to, be, to, to think about it. So you might have to cut out your uh, Dunkin' or your Starbucks once a week to, to afford that. I learned very early on um, when I was much younger that about credit, getting into credit card debt because I myself having a major in mathematics, a degree in finance and accounting, I got myself into a ton of debt um, many years ago. So I learned very early on that I just did not want to have any debt. So once I had that, a lot of debt, and I'm talking, we're talking about, you know, $22,000, $25,000, and this is not school debt, this is just like credit cards, financing furniture, you know, I thought it was, I, it was cute, you know, to get credit card offers and go and buy all kinds of good stuff and furniture. And, and then I learned really quickly that I got, was in over my head. Once I paid that off, I pretty much determined that I was not ever going to be in credit card debt ever again. And so that's pretty much how I live my life now. But some, some people have to live and learn. Okay, here's a four-step budget process. Pretty simple. 
list all your monthly income. So if you have scholarships, if you have, uh, does anybody in here have scholarships? That would be great if you did. Oftentimes in, my, in these classes I have um, uh, sports uh, students who are in sports, so they have the, the uh, sports scholarships. And so this helps them to learn a better way to use that scholarship money in the budget. So list all your monthly income. That can include, um, again, scholarships. That can include your work money. That can include any side cash. You got a side hustle there um, that you're making included in there. And, um, and then for something like a scholarship, for example, if it's an annual scholarship of 5,000, you would want to divide that by 12 so that you can figure out how much you have per month on that. We're, in this class, we're going to do everything on a monthly basis for budgeting purposes. However, for your purposes, you may want to do a bi-weekly budget. So if you get paid every two weeks, you may want to do a bi-weekly budget for yourself. I have a bi-weekly budget because I get paid every two weeks. And uh, so I list all of that. And, and I just have a little simple Excel spreadsheet that lists the income from, you know, from uh, whatever sources. And then um, all monthly expenses. Then you list all your monthly expenses. So you have your what's coming in and then the cash flow that's going out. And again, things that don't recur monthly, you want to do um, an average or an annualized. So you would say, okay, on average, I spend $1,000 in books per year. Okay, divide that by 12, and that'll give you your monthly budget for that so that you can accommodate for that. Okay, so how do I figure out what my bottom line is, what my cash flow is? Well, I take my total expenses, and I'm going to subtract that from my total income. So that's going to be your net cash flow. So that's going to be what you have um, left to work with. And then you can make adjustments as needed. Now, if you come up with a positive number, you'd want to make adjustments to say, okay, if I have a positive number and it's really, really a big number and I don't really need that much money, then maybe you can make adjustments and move some money over to your savings account or what have you. If that number is negative, that means you're in trouble. That means because you're overspending, you don't have enough income to, um, to make those expenses. So that's the making adjustments part. Okay, so here's another example. In addition to your monthly expenses, you have the following college expenses that you pay twice a year. $3,500 for tuition each semester. So this is, and this happens twice a year. $750 in student fees each, each semester, and $800 for textbooks each semester. Okay, so this is, you pay these twice a year, twice a year. So this is an important problem because I think on one of the, one of the quizzes that we have, we'll, we'll have a problem similar to this. So it's important to know how to, what we call annualize or average these out. Yeah, we'll have something similar like this on uh, chapter four quiz. Okay, so how do we figure this out? So we're paying these amounts of money twice a year. So the one, one thing we can do is figure out how much they are on an annual basis, and then to get it down to the monthly amount, we would divide by 12. So let's figure out the 3,500, the 750, and the 800 for textbooks each semester, and we're doing that twice a year. So again, since we're going to a monthly budget, we have 3,500 plus the 750 plus the 800, and that's twice a year. Alternatively, you could have said 3,500 times two plus 750 times two plus 800 times two. You could have done that too and just added them all up. And that gives me 10,100. That is my annual expense. So in order to figure out what that is on a monthly basis, because again, when we're doing this budgeting process, we are gonna do everything on a monthly basis, I would divide that by well, now if this were you and you were doing a bi-weekly, meaning 26 times per year, you would take that and divide it by 26 to determine how much you would have to apply towards your school, your tuition, your books. This is, since we're doing it on a monthly, we're gonna divide that by 12. And on average, that's $842 a month that we have to budget. $842, good thing, hopefully Chandler Gilbert isn't that expensive. 
um, when it comes to uh, tuition expenses. But as you uh, transfer out, you'll see like tuition get pretty expensive at the, the universities. So um, you'll want to uh, budget accordingly for that. Okay, so that's about $850. Some, sometimes it's hard to even make $850, especially as a student, per month. So that can be a bit much. Okay, here's another example. Across all institutions, the average cost of a three-credit college class is approximately $1,500. What is the uh, approximate cost here for three credits? What is it per credit hour? I don't even know what it is per credit hour here. But it's less than 1500 right? Is it yeah. 80, 90, 200 maybe? I don't know. So even if it was $200 here, that would be, what, $600 for a credit, uh, three credit, credit course. Okay, so across all institutions, so this is just averaging everything, and this was taken in... What are we in 2022? This is from like 2016 or 17, I wanna say. So that was the average there. Uh, suppose that between class time, commute time, and study time, the average class requires about 10 hours per week of your time. Okay, so that's, you know, getting here, being in class, doing all the homework. Assuming that you could have had a job paying $10 per hour instead, what's the net cost of the class compared to working? Is it a worthwhile expense? So here we're trying to think of a cost-benefit analysis, right? So we're saying, I can take a three-credit course for $1,500, or I can work 10 hours per week at $10 per hour, and let's see for, um, if it's worthwhile. Or can you, could you do both? Okay, so if we assume that a typical college semester is 14 weeks long, so if we're working 14 weeks, 10 hours for every week, at $10 per hour, that should be HR, not HE, $10 per hour. You can see that we're doing unit analysis, so we're bringing unit analysis in here as a reminder. So 14 weeks times 10 hours per week times $10 per hour, we get the cancellations, and we end up with $1,400. So your total net cost of taking the class is $1,500, plus the opportunity loss, or I should say the opportunity cost, since you're not working, if we add that to the $1,500, we're saying that basically it's $2,900, it's costing you $2,900 because you're not working. You're not working the uh, $10 hour, 14 weeks uh, for 10 hours. So if we add that to the whole amount of time, we're losing out. Now, if we, you know, you could do both. I don't see why not. Why not do both? Um, okay. So even though we look at the $1,500 and we're like, oh, well, you know, depending on your level of income, that might be a lot, uh, just depends. Um, but again, the college graduates, there's a study that shows that college graduates earn nearly one million over their lifetime, more than a high school graduate does. And that's a general, that's a study that's been, that was done probably 10 or, 10 or 15 years ago. So the, prob the number is probably higher than that now. Okay. Find a way to make your budget allow for savings. Savings is really important. Even if you have to start with $10, $5, $10. What's important about savings is creating the habit. Once you create the habit, you, for, you, you will even forget that you're contributing or you're missing out on that five, 10, 25, $50. Um, understand the basic mathematics of loans. We're going to be learning a little bit more about that in sections 4B through 4D. Understand how taxes are computed and how can they, they can affect your financial decisions. It's tax season right about now, so hopefully you're all preparing for that. Some smiles and some frowns. Um, understand how the federal budget affects future, uh, future loans and personal finances. Okay. So our um, work in this chapter is going to be highly focused on understanding savings plans, understanding loans, understanding mortgages, understanding the basics of interest.
and how that affects your finances. Okay, so we're going to do some examples of budgeting. And let me put this on pause. Okay, so this other example is with Brianna. And she is coming up with a budget for herself. She's in college. And she pays $700 for rent, $120 for gas for her car, $140 for health insurance, $75 for auto insurance, $25 for renter's insurance, $110 for her cell phone, $100 for utilities, about $300 for groceries, and $250 for entertainment, including eating out. In addition, over the entire year, she spends about $12,000 for college expenses. She gives about $1,000 to gifts to family and friends, and she spends $1,500 for vacations and winter break, about $800 on clothes, $600 in charity. Um, okay, so they gave us her monthly, and then they gave us some annual information there. So she's got a lot of expenses, but this is actually reality. So if any of you live with your parents right now and you're like, I need out, consider the reality of actually paying rent, paying utilities, paying for, you know, doing all these things. It might be better that you save your money and, you know, finish your schooling first and then consider this. Okay. Um, now, now we get to the income. So they gave us all of that expense and that huge paragraph of expenses and then we have two sentences with her income. Her income is a monthly after-tax paycheck of about $1,600 and a $3,000 annual scholarship. So she gets $16 a month, but she's got a $3,000 scholarship that she received at the beginning of the year. It's not a $3,000 per month, it's a $3,000 annual. So let's figure out her monthly cash flow. So there's a lot of information in this problem, um, but we're going to get it down to a monthly basis. Again. We're going to be doing everything in budgeting in a monthly basis. So we're going to be dividing things by 12 for the most part, or multiplying by 12. Okay, so let's figure out what her average monthly income is. And again, we're going to annualize or get, it, get things to an annual basis and divide by 12. For the things that we have that are on a monthly basis, we can already just add those up. But first, let's figure out her monthly income. She's got her $1,600 paycheck, which is per month, so we got that. And then she's got a $3,000 scholarship, so that's per year. So we need to divide that by 12 to figure out what that is per month. If I take $3,000 and divide that by 12, I get 250. So in reality, her income from all sources is 1850. If you take the $3,000 and don't spend it all in one, um, in one sitting. So we got 1850 is her total uh, income. Now let's look up at her average monthly expenses. Okay, so they listed the 700, the 120, the 140. All of these numbers that you see here were already listed as monthly expenses in the problem statement that you saw. Where it gets a little bit more difficult is where we have to do these ones. So let's look at her annual expenses. She's got the 12,000 for tuition. I think the 1,000 is books and fees and all of that. Uh, 1,000, 1,500, 800. All of those were annual. So we're going to add those up and divide by 12 to get the monthly of 1,325. So that's just her school expenses of 1,325. Okay, and if I take the um, 1,820 that she had in the monthly expenses, which you saw for rent, utilities, groceries, all of that good stuff, and add that to the annualized college expenses of 1,325, that gives us $3,145. That's a lot of money. So I have three, I don't even think I have $3,000 in expenses. Maybe I did when I was studying, but geez. Okay, $3,145, but the cash flow, if you recall, it's monthly cash flow is monthly income minus your monthly expenses. So I have 1850 minus 3,145, and guess what, that gives us a negative number. So she's in the hole about $1,300 a month, $1,295. So she's spending more than she can, than she's taking in. So you have to make adjustments as needed. In most cases, the answer to the budget problem is to make more money or to decrease your expenses, or both. Decrease your expenses, make more money. So she's gonna need some big time adjustments there. Okay, so any questions on how 
how we came up with these monthly expenses, monthly income. So you'll want to definitely pay attention to the problems as they'll show you, they'll indicate whether it's a monthly expense, whether it's an annual expense, and so you'll have to know. If it's monthly, okay, I, there's nothing I have to do. If it's annual, I need to divide by 12. Um, if it's semi-annual, for example, if you have a semi-annual expense, that means two times a year, you'll want to make sure to multiply that out and then divide by 12 to get the um, monthly expense. So we're going to do some more examples of, of this type of budgeting process and to determine what your cash flow is. Okay, so this problem, so let's look at 31. So you got negative 270. So it looks like several of you got it, so I'm going to trust that that's the answer. Um, so let's walk through this one. So we have a part-time job at $650 per month, college from, from grandparents at $400 a month, scholarship $6,000 a year, and then we have these expenses on the right-hand side. So let's figure out what those are on a monthly basis, and we figure out cash flow by taking income minus expenses. Okay, so... Let's take a look at our dot cam. We'll walk it out over here. And let's see. Okay, so we had, okay, so what was the first item of the income? What was the first item? 650 per month. Okay, so that was 650 per month on the income, and then? 400 per month. Okay, and then there was another $400 per month in income, and then there was something that was on a yearly basis, right? 6,000 per year. So the 6,000 per year, that has to be divided by 12. So what does that come out to? 500. 500 even, okay, so I have 500. So is that all the income? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have 650, 400, and 500 for my income. Okay, so what does that add up to? 1550? 1550? 1550. Okay, so does everybody understand why we divided that scholarship by 12 to get to the monthly? Okay, so there's my income. Okay, let's start with the expenses. What was the first one? 500 per month. Okay, and that was a monthly basis, so we can leave it as is. And then 60 per week. 60 per week, okay, so 60 per week. 240. And you get 240 by multiplying that by four. four. So we're gonna take 60 t times four weeks because we said in the problem statement that we're going to assume that there's four weeks in one year. So we take four weeks. So that's 240. Thank you. Okay, and so we have 500. 240. What was the other expense? 3,000 semi annually. Semi annually. Was it 3,000? 3,600. Okay. So 3,600 semi annually is twice a year. So my first thing is I have to multiply that by 2. two. That says 7,000. Which one? The third one, the second one. Uh, this says 3,600. Oh. So let's multiply this by 2. And that gives us, what, 7,200? Yep. But that is annual. Annual. So now what do I have to do to get that down to a monthly? Divide by 12. Divide by 12. So what does that give me if I divide by 12? 600. 600 even. Any more expenses? Yes, 120 per week. 120 per week, okay. So I'm gonna move this up, 120 per week. And I'm gonna multiply that by four. And that gives me? 480. 480. Is that all or is there still more? That's it. That's it. Okay, so I have 500. 240 that we calculated, 600 that we calculated, and 480 that we calculated. So what is my, what are my total expenses? 1820. 1820? Yep. 
Okay, 1820 expenses. So now to figure out the cash flow, we take income minus expenses. So I take 1550 minus 1820. And that is where you get the minus 270. That's a sad face. You gotta make more money or reduce expenses somehow, right? So this is income minus expenses. It's a pretty simple formula if you think about it. Income minus expenses is, is, the, is the catch, okay. Let's go back to, uh, we're going to take a look at number 32, so I'll let you work, go back to that one. So we did 31, now 32. Take a look at that one and then we'll walk through it. Okay, so for number 32, I'm hearing 640, so let's check that. 640 number. Okay, I'm going to start off with my income. And looks like I had $1,200 a month. That was on a monthly basis. And then I had some sort of scholarship or something, or $7,000 a year. Divided by 12. What does that come out to if I divide that by 12? 583. 583. Is it like 583.33 or something like that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to round it. I'll leave it out. I'll leave the 33 cents out. Okay, and then I have something else, and that was also annual. So I'm going to take that and divide that by 12, and what does that give me? It was another one that I rounded, but 667. 667, okay. So we'll round that to a whole number. So 1,200, 583, 667. Is that all of my income? Yes. Okay, so I have 1,200, 583, and 667. That gives me an income of? Monthly, twenty-four fifty. Okay, so monthly income of two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars per month. Now let's look at the expenses. Okay, so my expenses, I had six hundred dollars. I think that was rent. I had groceries or something for seventy dollars per week. But I'm going to multiply that by four to get two hundred and eighty because again, we're doing this on a monthly basis. Okay, so 280. Then I had this $7,500 expense, and that was on an annual basis, so I need to divide that by 12. So if I take the 7,500 and divide it by 12, what number do I get? 7,500 divided by 12. 625. Okay, 625, thank you. And there was a $40, another $40 expense. There was a $200 monthly expense for something else. And then a $65. Okay, so let's add all these. We got 600, 280, 625, 40, 265 gives us Say again? 1810. 1810. 1810, thank you. Of expenses. Okay, so now to find the cash flow, we take this income minus expenses. That one gets a happy face. $640 left over at the end of the month. And again, this is all on a monthly basis. If you wanted to do your, your uh, uh, budget instead on a bi-weekly basis, or even a weekly, if you did a bi-weekly basis, we would, um, instead of dividing by 12 on a lot of these problems, we would instead divide by 26 for bi-weekly. If you wanted to do it on a weekly basis, does anybody in here get paid weekly? 
on a weekly basis, some jobs pay weekly, so if you wanted to do it on a weekly basis, then you would divide, instead of 12, you would divide by 52 weeks in a year. And that would give you your weekly budget. So you can adjust the budgets accordingly depending on your specific needs. Okay, any questions on how we came up with this number of $640? See how we annualized, dividing by 12? Sometimes we had to multiply by four weeks to get to the monthly basis. Okay, 